It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. Hey, we've got a great podcast for you today. You've made it to retirement. We're going to talk about how now not to screw it up. Bob and I are going to give you our playbook for the things you don't want to do when you're finally retired. We have our financial propaganda segment today. There's a lot of wealthy investors in cash. What should you be doing with your money with the upcoming election, the upcoming potential recession? We're going to talk about exactly how to invest your money. And we have our mailbag section today. We have some listeners that have written in, one asking about a Social Security, his pension. Are you making the right moves with those things? And we have our mailbag section today. We have a lot of listeners who have written in asking about Social Security. Should you pay off your mortgage? We're going to break all that stuff down for you. Check it out. We've got a great show. So congratulations. You finally made it to retirement. Bob, I thought we could discuss with our listeners now what to do that they've made it to retirement so they just don't screw it up. Hey, Rod, the number one thing is don't make any sudden decisions, you know, like buying a Lamborghini or a Bentley. <laughs> Man, that was the first thing I was going to do. Uh, um, <laughs> yes, you don't want to make sudden decisions. Uh, you don't want to start making rash decisions like, for example, I just met with a client this past week. He, he wants to retire in three years. He's like, I want to get out. And he's thinking about buying a shore house, but he said, you know, I don't really know where I want to buy that shore house. So I'm like, well, why don't you rent for a summer first? Because you're looking to spend about a million dollars. And, you know, that's a lot of money to spend to find out you don't like where you're at. Well, that's a lot of money today, but it really doesn't buy you a lot at the shore anymore, unfortunately, right? No, it does. Depending what shore you're at, that's, uh, you're right. It might not be prime real estate like it used to be. Yeah, and that's a big decision, but, you know, I see it happening all the time. You know, someone might retire and then relocate on a whim. You know, like they might move to another town, another state. There are people moving overseas. You don't want to move to Panama and find out, hey, I don't speak the language. Yeah. So I think the bottom line is, Bob, you want to keep your options fluid, especially in that first six to 12 months. And then you can start to make some, you know, bigger decisions about your retirement. You know, you're right, Ryan. And another big no no is don't jump into an investment, especially one you don't have any understanding whatsoever about. Did you just say annuities, Bob, or maybe I misheard you? <laughs> no, no, no. I said don't invest in things where they're too good to be true, where you get all the upside, none of the downside. There's no cost. You'll never lose money. You'll just make more money than you ever could imagine in your lifetime. Well, as our, one of our clients said this past week, annuities give the pains the most pain. So thank you, Cliff. I thought that was pretty brilliant. And if you, I think that is show, brilliant, right? I think we're batting a thousand. Every annuity our clients have come in with, when we call the company, we find out. They had no idea that's how it actually operated and what it actually cost. And it has cost a lot of pain to our clients. <laughs> and I don't want to pick on annuities, but I think the, the bigger picture why not? here is... <laughs> why not? Well, I think you just don't want to jump into an investment right away. That's a one size fits all solution, right? And that's what it sounds like. I saw online today, you get an annuity at a guaranteed 8%. Well, you and I oh, know it's on. not a, truly a guaranteed 8%. So a lot of this stuff sounds so good to be true. Income for life but you really need to understand these things first. And I think the worst thing you can do is just jump into an investment. It sounds like it solves all your problems because as you and I know, Bob, it really doesn't work that way. No, it really doesn't, Ryan. And again, the rule of thumb should be whenever you see something that's really too good to be true, when you see someone guaranteeing an eight or 9% interest rate, when you know, your money market rates only one and a half percent today, if you even have that, you got to know that it's something seriously wrong there. Get a second opinion. Just don't jump into those investments until you thoroughly vetted them. Yeah, because nothing should be that complicated. And that's another maybe caveat here, extrapolate a little bit, is if you have an advisor that you sit with, it sounds like Chinese when they're talking about the financial markets in your portfolio, like that's a problem too. Like you need to understand everything. It should be intuitive. If not, you're probably not working with the right person. Well, that's right. Why? That's the other thing that you should do when you retire is make sure you're working with a fiduciary. Yes, exactly. Because, you know, during the wealth creation stage, maybe you have a couple different advisors. You know, maybe you have an account over here with uh, Morgan Stanley. You have a 401k over here. And really, none of these people are giving you actual financial advice. No one's sitting down and running some retirement numbers for you. 
In that case, you probably have more like a broker as opposed to a financial planner. And the real litmus test today, Bob, to your point is, make sure the person you're working with is an actual fiduciary who has to act in your best interest. Well, you know, Rob, we just had that happen this week. We just had another new client come in and they had what you call a collection of investments, right? They had an IRA, 401k, they had three brokerage accounts, joint account, single account, money all over the place. And they said, Bob, I'm diversified. Look at this. And you know what they really had was a collection of investments because none of those people they worked with were a fiduciary, right? No, exactly right. And the thing is, you might say, well, my advisor, he or she just doesn't do that kind of work. But believe me, you're probably paying for it anyway. <laughs> and the hidden fees. Yeah, that- but you know what, Ryan? If you yeah. have a financial advisor who doesn't do a plan where they manage your money at concert with all the money you have, you don't have a financial advisor. You don't have a fiduciary. You have a salesperson. Yes, Bob, which brings us to our last point, probably the most obvious, but you need to do it, is have an actual plan. (laughs) Have someone sit down, run the numbers on what you're going to need in retirement, then you can reverse engineer, then you can start making decisions about the investments you're going to use and putting together that long-term game plan. But if you don't have a game plan, you have a good chance of screwing up your retirement. Yeah, you know what, Ryan? You have to invest with the end in mind, what we call the A to B process, right? You have to invest with the goal of achieving your point B goals. In other words, you wanna make sure that you're gonna be able to overcome inflation and taxes and your income is gonna grow enough so you can stay retired, right? Shouldn't that be the number one goal in retirement, to stay retired? Yes, I think that's the best goal. And that's where the other thing is, it's a working document. So the way not to screw Mm -hmm. this up is not only have a financial plan, but make sure it's getting updated at least annually because I can promise you, things in your life are gonna change. We know tax laws change. We know the markets change. Things need to be readjusted. So when you're thinking about your financial plan, it should always be like a working document, just like getting your physical every year from the doctor. You need to have that checkup, not only to be on track, but make sure you stay on track. And I think as you launch into retirement, Rye, once you have that plan in place that you described, then you can focus on what's really important. What are you actually going to do with your time while you're retired? If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free, and you can download it right now by texting the word BULLISH, that's BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's texting the word BULLISH to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, five ways to maximize your retirement accounts, just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. Or check out the show notes for the episode at bullish.com. time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call up the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So Bob, what did you find out there this week in the horrid world of financial propaganda? You know, Ry, there are too many articles to even cover, but uh, the one that really stuck out to me And of course, you know, this is what financial propaganda does. It makes you fear the upcoming, you know, market downturn, the fear of the upcoming, you know, recession. So they run articles with the market at an all time record high that half of the world's richest investors are looking for a big drop in 2020 and have already gotten out of the market. Wow. So you've got all the wealthy people, quote unquote, getting their money out of the market. So the assumption here is all the smart people are putting their money in cash. What are you doing with your money? Well, that's so funny. You know, my, my whole career, and I've been doing this for 45 years, as you well know. And, time, you know, once a year, someone will ask me, Bob, what's the smart money doing? And they think, you know, the super rich somehow have some gifted insight into the unknowable. And in this article, they play on that fear and that on that thought process. So it says the super rich have increased their cash holdings to 25 percent of their average assets. I mean, when you think of super rich, do you think of billions and trillions of dollars? Yeah, of course. I mean, who else is the super rich? I'm thinking yachts. I'm thinking hanging out on the Mediterranean. I mean, what else should I be thinking about here? Well, here's the thing that blows my mind. This came from a survey that was done by a bank called UBS, where they surveyed 3,000 high net worth investors who had just over a million dollars in assets. 
Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's a lot of people, and that's not a small net worth, but it certainly doesn't speak to the headline that, uh, you know, the ultra wealthy are making these big moves with their portfolio. But I think it also speaks to, Bob, just all the fear out there right now. And as listeners of our show know, we love when that fear is in the air because that's usually a very positive sign for the economy and the market, which sounds counterintuitive, but it's true. Yeah, I know. That's been the greatest thing about this big, booming bull market we've been in for 10 years, Rye. We can't control the market volatility or the returns, but we can control our own behavior. And, you know, what these articles do is they create fear and you think you have to do something. But, you know, the famous coach John Wooden said it best. Don't mistake activity for achievement. Right. You don't have to do, you know, not doing anything is doing something. And, you know, all you have to do is think about all those people that panicked out in 2008 and missed out on this great market. Well, I think right now it's a really good time to talk about that because let's we have the election next year. We have all these recession fears in the air. And I'm getting this question all the time, Bob. You might be getting this question as well. Like, what adjustments do I need to be making in my portfolio now? Who's going to get in office next year? What are the different things we need to be doing? And it's a myth. There's things you shouldn't be doing. You know, the worst thing you can do is change your plan because of these things. Uh, you know, so it is harder to stay still here, but stick to your game plan. Yeah, you do. You have to have a game plan, which means you have to have goals and you just have to work backwards to those goals. Remember what we say all the time, right? Time passes and markets operate, neither of which cares how you feel. Well said, Bob. Very well said. Well, on the other side of the spectrum, I actually found some good news out there this week for all of us. And in 2020, we can save more in our retirement plans, Bob, than ever before. All of the rates have actually gone up that we can save on our 401ks, our IRAs, and if you're self-employed, uh, in your own self-employed plan. In fact, you know, right, IRAs- that's great news because you know 401ks and IRAs are the only federally approved legal tax shelters out there where it's a you can't lose on these ideas, and you can put more away now. That's music to my ears. Yes, so your 401k now goes from 19,000 to 19,500, but if you're above 50. You can do an additional 6500 Bob, which is up from 6000 this year. So that's a nice little jump. Hey, Rye, and on top of that, if you have a SEP, right, an individual pension plan, you can put in 57000 now, up from 56000 just last year. Yes. Okay. If you're self-employed, you need to talk to your accountant because there's some huge benefits there that you can put some money away pre-tax. Like That's what it's all about. That tax planning, money saved in taxes, just as green as any money you can make invested. You know, right. The other thing is, this is where a lot of good planning comes into place, where having, you know, a fiduciary working with your estate plan, where you can make some really smart decisions. Like, for example, you start to gift money to your children who like maybe that. are in their early years of working and are living paycheck to paycheck and can't really afford to max out their 401k contribution, their IRA contribution. So gifting money to them and giving them the ability to put that money away you know, shelter that income, have that money compound for 40 or 50 years, it's going to create millions of dollars for them in retirement. So there's lots of good things you can do besides contributing to your own plan. Bob, I think we should really reflect on that one about gifting to your children every year. I mean, I just, I know what about it resonates with me in a big way. And I think we should really, really start talking about that strategically. Within All our right. Own Some children are doing better than <laughs> others. And last I checked, you don't need anything from me. So thank God I got other kids I can give money to. <laughs> But I could work so much (laughs) less, Bob. (laughs) If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. If you qualify, here's what you can expect. We're going to look at everything from taxes. Have you optimized your financial plan for taxes? We're going to show you how to save on taxes so there's more money in your pocket, not the government's. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about? We're going to show you how to bulletproof and safeguard your portfolio, protect it for retirement. To see if you qualify, simply text the words free financial review to 844-752-6692. That's the words free financial review and text them to 844-752-6692. See if you qualify for our holistic total financial master plan. If you ever have a question you want to ask myself or Bob directly, you can email us questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. Bob and I answer all your questions directly. And it's a really good question. 
We answered right here on the show. And like most weeks, we got some pretty good questions. And we have our man in the studio, Dan Irving, to help us with questions this morning. How you doing, Dan? Hey, Ryan and Bob. I'm doing well. I just recently ran my first ever 5K. I like to think of it as preemptively working off the Thanksgiving meal I'm going to have. <laughs> Nice. What was your time? Can I ask? It was a little under half an hour. Um, So some room for improvement, but I'm pretty happy for it being my first time. Well, we're a family of runners. That's a tough race. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Well done. Well done. (laughs) Thanks. We got some great questions on the mailbag today. Our first one comes to us from James on Port Jefferson, Long Island. And James is writing to Bob. He says, Bob... I retired last month and started my state pension and social security. I'd like to do some part-time work just to keep myself occupied, but I've heard that this can mess up my social security. Should I avoid getting a job? Hey, James, that's a great question. I got to tell you, everybody I've ever worked with has always had those questions about social security because we want as much back as we put in because we worked hard for that money and we don't want to pay tax on it. But you know what, Rye, there are some taxes or some situations where it's taxable with social security, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you can get penalized if you do take it early. And if you want to keep working, well, you might want to wait and take Social Security at your full retirement, which might be 66 or 67, depending on how old James actually is. Yeah, but, you know, in a case like James, since he's already taken his Social Security and he wants to keep himself occupied, you know, we talked about earlier in the show how you really want to focus on, you know, what you're going to do in retirement, you know, once you have your plan done. In his case, he just wants to keep busy and do something part time. He's still going to make more money after tax, whether he gets taxed on the Social Security or not. Yeah, Bob, it almost go back to that old saying, don't let the tax tail wave the lifestyle dog, I guess, in this case, right? I mean, if it's going to make you happy and the numbers do work, do it. But I don't think it also speaks to you have to be really careful when you take Social Security. And depending on how old you are, sometimes it makes sense to take it early, sometimes later, but it's going to depend on if you're working or not. That's a big determining factor. You know, James just sounds like a candidate for financial planning, right? He needs to have a plan where his life is mapped out, his wealth projections are done, his income projections are done, and then these decisions are so easy once you have all that information in front of you. So, James, give us a call. We want to help you, and we'll help you to make these decisions, and you'll feel really good about it. That's some good information in there, Ryan and Bob. Uh, Thank you, James, for writing in. Our next question is from Jen in Freehold, New Jersey. Jen says, Ryan... I've been paying off my mortgage aggressively and almost have it all knocked out. Wow, congratulations, Jen. Once it's done, I'll have almost $5,000 that I can save each month. I'm 53 and I feel behind with my retirement savings, so should I invest this money aggressively? Wow, that's a good question, Jen. And I would say maybe, maybe not. Um, You're 53 now and if you're looking to retire in the next, I don't know, 10 years or so, you have to start thinking about protection of your wealth as well. It can't just be about growth and accumulation. So I would say, you know, in this case, Bob, I don't think you can just say I need to be aggressive. You have to factor in your time horizon as well, because the shorter your time horizon, the less aggressive you can be by nature. No, that makes so much sense, Rye. You know, you can't be real aggressive when you have markets that are inherently volatile, because if we have another 2008, I don't care how smart or how determined you are, that's going to put a damper on your enthusiasm for investing. So I think it's a... um, you know, situation where you need to be more balanced in your thinking when it comes to investing at that age. Well, the other thing is, first off, what I'd look at is what tax benefits do you have available? You have this new $5,000 a month you can save. That's great. So my first question would be, well, are you maxing out your 401k? Can you add some more there? Can we do a Roth IRA? Can we do a Roth back to a Roth? You know, there's so many different things you can do from a tax perspective first. So I'd look at all those options. Then I would look at in context, your overall plan, what kind of risk do you really need? And I think that's a question we all have to ask ourselves is what risk am I going to need to get to my goals? And for most of us, you probably need less risk than you think. I would start there as opposed to just thinking I've got to be aggressive because I'm catching up. You might not necessarily have to be that aggressive. And that's an important thing to know. It really is, right? It's, and it all ties into making smart decisions you know, based on having the information, you know, even paying off your mortgage. I mean, I had a client last month for the first time in their lives they took out a mortgage and we were able to lock in two and seven eighths on a 30 year mortgage. I mean, that we just wow. caught the bottom of the market, but you know, interest rates, it's all decision on what's available at that time. And when you have a plan, it's so much easier. It's common sense when everything's laid out in front of you and you're not making an emotional decision. 
these are all complex decisions. You know, thinking about when should I take Social Security? Do I take a mortgage? Do I pay my mortgage off? If I have money to save, is it the most tax efficient way to do it? And it's all in context of that overall plan. That's the key here because without it, you're really just shooting blind. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. If you qualify, here's what you can expect. We're going to look at everything from taxes. Have you optimized your financial plan for taxes? We're going to show you how to save on taxes so there's more money in your pocket, not the government's. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about? We're going to show you how to bulletproof and safeguard your portfolio, protect it for retirement. To see if you qualify, simply text the words free financial review to 844 752 6692. That's the words free financial review and text them to 844-752-6692. See if you qualify for our holistic total financial master plan. Thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on this show, Check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting BeBullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, Be Bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.